uh, to you all. I welcome you uh, in this uh, lecture on mechatronics. Today we are going to talk about uh, the signal conditioning and uh, use of OPEM as a signal conditioner. Uh, this uh, uh, block diagram essentially shows uh, uh, the important mechatronics components okay, uh, where uh, you can see that uh, usually uh, uh, we have uh, an uh, say actuator okay, uh, and uh, uh, there is a sensor all right, uh, and uh, you have uh, input signal conditioning and interfacing. Then you have uh, the digital control architecture and output signal conditioning and interfacing okay. and then uh, we have uh, uh, display uh, for uh, viewing purpose. Uh, here uh, uh, as we have been uh, discussing uh, uh, today uh, uh, out of these uh, mechatronics components, uh, I am going to talk about uh, the uh, input signal conditioning and interfacing. Okay. So, how the uh, sensor uh, signals uh, uh, can be uh, interfaced uh, to your uh, microcontroller. Okay. Uh, so, uh, let us look at uh, what are the um, uh, basic uh, uh, requirement for the signal conditioning. Okay. Uh, so, uh, the signal conditioning uh, uh, is needed because uh, whatever signal uh, we get from the sensor, uh, this signal may be too small to be amplified okay. uh, uh, or uh, they may have uh, 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 certain interferences uh, which need to be removed. Uh, many times this signal could be uh, a non-linear signal and uh, we may require um, uh, a, a linearization process uh, through uh, linearization of the signal through some means or uh, uh, the uh, signal could be an analog signal okay? and we know that the microcontroller uh, they take uh, only digital signals. So, we need to um, uh, convert this analog uh, signal and make it uh, as a digital signal. Or uh, 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 if your uh, signal is digital, say you are getting from the microprocessor uh, a digital signal, uh, you may require it to uh, be uh, made to the analog signal so that you can feed it to the actuator. Okay. Uh, so, uh, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, the uh, signal could be say a resistance change and uh, we want to convert it uh, into a say uh, current change signal okay? or um, uh, your signal could be a voltage uh, change signal and we want to make it a current change signal. So, these uh, may be the varieties of requirements for which uh, we need to have the signal conditioning. Then as I said the signal uh, 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 the signals uh, has to be uh, uh, sent to the uh, microprocessor uh, for uh, uh, okay for the processing purpose. Now uh, we need uh, to send these to send these signal to the microprocessor from the uh, sensor we need to interface it uh, we require certain type of uh, interfacing uh, uh, of the sensor signal with the microprocessor microprocessor. Okay. Uh, so, uh, what could be the simplest interface uh, as all of you know it should be a piece of wire uh, where we can just connect uh, your uh, signal output port uh, to the microprocessor input port. Okay. So, simple uh, uh, simplest uh, interface could be a piece of wire okay. and um, uh, uh, these interfaces um, uh, when we are going to do uh, for the signal conditioning and protection um, uh, 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 signal conditioning purpose the, the there has to be uh, uh, certain protection also. So, that uh, uh, your uh, abnormal signals are not able to uh, damage your uh, microprocessor. Okay. Uh, for example, this uh, microprocessor need to be uh, protected against uh, excessive voltage or signal of say wrong polarity uh, if by mistake it comes. So, th there should be uh, 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 safety uh, uh, provisions uh, in the interfacing 
to take care of uh, these uh, uh, wrong polarity. And uh, uh, microprocessor requires um, uh, as I said uh, input to be a digital one. So, if your sensor output is analog say uh, a potentiometer giving you an analog voltage, then uh, you require this analog signal to be converted into a digital signal ok. And uh, we may require uh, uh, analog signal to be amplified before be, uh, um, uh, being converted into a digital signal. So, all these type of tasks could be done uh, in the unit what we call it as the interfacing. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, in, in the interfacing unit uh, we can uh, do all these uh, tasks, uh, there are certain uh, more uh, requirement. Even many times digital signal need to be conditioned for better quality means uh, if we do not have a better quality digital signal we may require it to be uh, uh, better condition it ok. And uh, uh, actuator might require analog signal. Uh, uh, so, uh, the digital output from microprocessor needs to be converted into the analog signal. For example, if you take a uh, case of a uh, say DC motor um, uh, control ok. So, uh, you need to give the DC motor an analog uh, signal ok. Uh, so, uh, 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 the and uh, the digital signal uh, and the signal coming out from the microprocessor they are digital in nature. So, uh, we need the conversion from uh, digital to analog ok. Um, and uh, uh, protection for any signal being inputted back to the microprocessor is also uh, required. So, uh, these are the things uh, which um, are uh, taken care by the interfacing uh, units ok. Uh, now, uh, 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 signal conditioning process uh, uh, may uh, uh, occur uh, or the follow following process may occur during the signal conditioning ok. Uh, as I said uh, protection to prevent damage to the next element ok. Uh, that is uh, uh, a microprocessor uh, as a result of uh, uh, high voltage voltage or current it may get damage ok. Uh, so, uh, uh, we uh, need to have uh, a protection unit ok and this could be a, a series current limiting register or um, normal uh, uh, fuses uh, to break ok. So, that uh, 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 the fuse breaks and uh, uh, it protects your microprocessor or uh, polarity protection um, could be there or uh, the voltage limiting circuit. So, all these uh, uh, are the provisions uh, which could be uh, there. And getting the signal to be right type of signal ok, uh, making the signal uh, into a DC voltage or current ok. So, uh, there could be various example. For example, uh, uh, if we are looking for getting a right type of signal. So, uh, if you look at uh, a VT stone bridge ok, there what is happening basically but there we have uh, having the change in resistance, uh, uh, change in uh, uh, resistance change in the strain gauge and that is converted into voltage change ok uh, by the Wheatstone uh, bridge uh, and uh, out of balance uh, voltage ok and uh, making si uh, signal di uh, digital or analog as the case may be. Then uh, 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 getting the right level of signal as I said uh, say the thermocouple signals are very minute uh, in the uh, uh, range of say millivolt. Okay, so, we need uh, this signal to be amplified ok and uh, uh, say uh, as we are going to talk uh, in the uh, coming slides about the operational amplifiers. These operational amplifiers are widely used for the amplifying purpose of these uh, signals ok. Uh, and then uh, uh, we, we may uh, need to uh, uh, eliminate or reduce the noise by using uh, various filters ok. I uh, will also be uh, talking about uh, filters maybe uh, in the next lecture. Then uh, uh, as I said uh, we may uh, need to manipulate the signal ok uh, that is uh, making it linear uh, of some variable ok. For example, the flow meter signal ok uh, is a non-linear and so the signal conditioner uh, is used to make it as a linear signal 
Okay. Now, uh, uh, after all these, uh, let us look at uh, 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 operational amplifier, uh, which is a very popular uh, element, okay, uh, pop very popular device, and uh, it is widely used for many of the signal conditioning um, uh, uh, operations. Okay. So, uh, first uh, we will be looking at um, uh, the basic. Uh, 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 characteristic uh, basic model of the operational amplifiers okay and in next lecture i'll be talking about the use of operational amplifiers as the signal conditioner okay uh, so uh, these operational amplifiers in short these are called as op amps okay uh, it's a basically high gain dc voltage amplifier Okay, and uh, they have got a differential input and usually a single ended output. Okay. So, uh, this is there and uh, the, the gain of these amplifiers is of, of uh, order of 100,000 very high gain okay. and uh, uh, ideally it increases the amplitude of a signal without affecting the phase relationship okay, of different component of the signal. So, uh, the, uh, that is another uh, beauty of it okay. and uh, uh, how it is uh, available uh, in the market. It is uh, it is supplied as a uh, IC or integrated circuit on a uh, um, uh, silicon chip and it is packaged uh, in 8 pin dual inline package integrated circuit uh, uh, um, uh, chip. Okay. So, uh, 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 the OPEM is available in uh, the packaging as I said, uh, 741 OPEM is very uh, widely used operational amplifier okay. um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, then you may ask what does it consist of. Okay. So, uh, the internet design of uh, the commercially available uh, 741 IC uh, consists of uh, what else transistors okay register and capacitor so these three components uh, uh, put in a combination basically constitutes the uh, 741 um, um, uh, 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 op okay um, that is there and uh, these uh, op amps can be combined with external discrete circuit component to create a wide variety of signal processing units, uh, signal processing circuits as I said. Um, so, uh, external discrete components here uh, the one which I am talking about here are basically uh, you could have the resistances, you could have the capacitors okay, uh, uh, which are external uh, to op amp circuit and by putting them in the different combinations you can get the different type of the signal conditioning. Okay. Uh, so, uh, uh, that is there and uh, uh, it is a building block for more complex uh, electronic circuit like uh, uh, say inverting amplifier uh, the one which is used to invert a uh, uh, signal as well as amplify it non inverting amplifier okay uh, that is uh, just amplifying the signal summing amplifier that is summing of the uh, two signals okay then integrating amplifier that is the signal being integrated differential amplifier that is the signal being differentiated logarithmic amplifier okay then uh, comparator analog to digital and digital to analog converter uh, active filters okay i uh, will be talking about all this and the sample and hold devices so all these are uh, the uh, possible uh, use of the um, uh, uh, op amp so, uh, the, the, this is how uh, 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 it looks like basically as I said uh, dual uh, um, uh, 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 pins are there. So, you have the two lines of the pins basically. So, you have uh, say here 1, uh, 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 2, 
uh, 3 and this is 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, there are 8 pins in it and this is uh, packaging and pin numbering of 741 uh, op-amp amplifier and basically uh, there is a uh, mark here uh, uh, just to identify uh, uh, that from left hand side of that you have to uh, start counting the uh, pins. Okay. So, uh, this is how uh, this is and um, uh, so this is how the packaging consists of and uh, uh, the pin description of these 8 pins is basically one is offset null, uh, the uh, second is inverting uh, input. Uh, that is there, third is the non-inverting input, then uh, you have the four is the negative voltage supply uh, usually minus 15 volt, then uh, fifth is the offset null, uh, six is the output voltage from where the output is taken and 7 is uh, the positive uh, voltage supply that is 15 volt and 8 is the offset null. So, inside whatever you are seeing, so uh, this is the actually uh, uh, how uh, these OPEM are described. So, the terminals which are usually shown here, uh, usually shown for the OPEM are the inverting input, non-inverting input and output. Okay, so, that is why you can see the, uh, these connections over here and uh, um, uh, um, uh, many times we also show the voltage supply uh, terminals. So, uh, here you can see that the negative voltage supply and the positive voltage supply. Okay. And as I said, uh, you may be eager to uh, uh, see how does the open internal design looks like. So, you can see here, uh, uh, there are various uh, transistors uh, are there, uh, registers are there. Okay. And you can see the various ports that is offset null, that is one uh, uh, here. Uh, then uh, we have uh, the second is inverting input. So, this is inverting input. Uh, third is non-inverting input, then fourth is the power supply, uh, you can see uh, this is the fourth is the power supply, fifth is the offset null, so the, you have the offset null, six is the output and so on, okay. seven is the again positive power supply. So, this way uh, uh, it is there and inside you have the transistors, resistors um, uh, being connected. And uh, if you go to the market to buy uh, this OPEM, uh, this is how uh, these are available. So, you will uh, find out this 741 uh, being uh, 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 imprinted over there and uh, this is how the uh, 741 uh, uh, you will be uh, 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 seeing. Okay. Uh, so, this is how uh, these are commercially available form of the 741 uh, OPEM. Uh, now, let us look at and try to understand the model of the amplifier. Okay? So, generally an amplifier is modeled as a two port device with the input and the output voltage reference to the ground. So, uh, this is how uh, the amplifier is modeled basically. So, uh, you have a, a input side here and you have the output side. Okay, and um, input um, and output voltages are referenced to the ground uh, over here. Uh, this is the input current, output current, uh, input voltage, and output voltage. Okay, and uh, the, as uh, you know, the, these are the amplifiers, so there are uh, there is going to be gain in the voltage, and this gain is uh, represented by say a letter mu, and this is output by input v uh, out by v in. The input impedance is defined as uh, V in by I in that is the input impedance and most of these uh, amplifiers are designed to have very large input impedance so that very little current is drawn from the uh, input. Okay. So, as I will be talking about this is one of the uh, very important assumption uh, which uh, we also take in the modeling of these uh, operational amplifiers. Okay. So, uh, the output impedance of amplifier is basically Z out is V out by I out uh, and it is a measure of how much the output voltage drops with the output current. 
here the output drop uh, voltage drop is measured relative to the output voltage with no current ok. So, this is how it is done and uh, most amplifiers are designed to have very small output impedance. So, that the output voltage will not change much as the output current uh, changes. Now, now, let us look at the ideal model of the amplifier operational amplifier. So, as I was saying, so this is the way it is uh, represented basically. So, you have the inverting input terminal uh, here uh, and you have the non-inverting input terminal and uh, you have the output terminal over here. So, this is uh, how the symbolic uh, symbolically the op uh, 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 represented ok. And uh, an ideal op is um, a differential input Input, okay, a single output amplifier. So, as you can see that there is a differential input and single output uh, is there uh, amplifier and this has got an infinite gain actually. Okay. And uh, voltages are uh, referred uh, to the common ground and uh, as I said it is an active device, okay. it is required connection to an external power supply as uh, I have talked about it, it is usually plus 15 volt and minus 15 volt. And uh, uh, since OPEM is an active device, output voltages and currents can be larger than the value applied to inverting and non-inverting terminal ok because it is an active device we are supplying power to it ok. And uh, an open circuit usually uh, have a feedback ok. So, uh, from the output side uh, the you have connection to uh, towards the input side that is what we call it as a feedback. So, the open uh, circuit usually has feedback from the output to the uh, inverting input and uh, uh, this feedback results in stabilization of the amplifier and helps in the control of the gain as we will be uh, looking in the uh, subsequent uh, slides as well as in lecture. Okay. Now, let us look at the equivalent circuit of the op -amp. Okay, so, with this assumption whatever assumptions uh, 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 we have uh, uh, taken, uh, so uh, with uh, these assumptions uh, here, uh, 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 these assumptions here uh, uh, we can draw the uh, equivalent circuit. Okay. So, uh, in the equivalent circuit you can see here uh, we have uh, 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 the two uh, voltage uh, sources uh, source uh, V1 and V2 over here. So, this is the input voltage and you have the output voltage over here. Uh, they, uh, this V in is the input uh, uh, okay, uh, input voltage. Uh, this uh, although we have assumed um, uh, uh, yes, we have assumed that uh, input side is uh, uh, going to have uh, 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 high uh, input impedance. Okay, uh, it has infinite impedance at both the inputs. Okay, hence no current is drawn from the input circuit. Okay, so uh, uh, therefore uh, the I2 is equal to I1 is equal to uh, zero over here. Okay, and uh, it has infinite gain. Okay. So, infinite gains mean mu uh, is equal to V out is equal to V in. So, uh, where what is V in? V in is basically V 2 minus V 1 from here. So, uh, infinite gain means that the V in is going to be uh, uh, 0 okay. and V in 0 means what you have V 2 is equal to V 1. Okay. And what does this mean? This means that uh, the, there are there is a shorting over here. Okay. This is denoted by shorting of the two inputs and usually some small resistance will be existing over uh, here. And uh, uh, it has uh, zero output impedance. Okay, uh, again uh, uh, one of the uh, assumptions over here. Therefore, the output voltage does not depend on the output current. Okay, and open uh, may draw current up to a limit depending on its power uh, handling capacity. 
okay. uh, so uh, uh, that is there and here in this figure you can see that uh, uh, this is uh, the uh, mu uh, uh, v in uh, where mu is the gain of the um, amplifier. Then uh, let us look at uh, the inverting amplifier okay that is the one which inverts the input signal okay so uh, in case of inverting amplifier it inverts the input voltage okay so uh, here to achieve this two external resistances are connected to the op amp okay so whatever op amp circuit we have seen we are using two external resistances one is r1 at the input side okay uh, of the uh, inverting terminal and other is the rf that is the feedback re uh, resistance in the feedback path okay so uh, the, these two are the external resistances which i talk to you these are the two external resistances which we are using uh, in order to invert the voltage signal okay invert and amplify the voltage signal so let us look at the equivalent circuit for an inverting amplifier okay so here uh, as we, uh, we assumed that uh, this is uh, short end over here okay uh, so um, we shorted it here signal is provided from uh, non inverting uh, uh, sorry inverting terminal and the non inverting terminal is earth grounded basically okay so this is the ideal model you have some load over here you get the output voltage over here okay uh, and this is the output current which is supplied through the feedback okay and you have the input current over here now uh, uh, let us take a point uh, say c over here now if i apply the kirchhoff current law at this point then what i get current in plus uh, this current and this current both are being uh, coming to this junction okay um, so uh, 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 i in plus i out, uh, out, out is equal to zero no current can flow to the input of the op amp okay so that is why we are taking this as zero so from this i get i in is equal to minus of i output okay and also the vc uh, at this point the, the voltage is zero because the two input are shot at uh, C over here. So, the voltage across uh, this one R1 is going to be what? Uh, V1 this side Vc this side. So, V1 minus Vc is equal to I in R1 and since this Vc is 0, V1 is, uh, is equal to I in uh, R1. So, because this is uh, uh, 0 over here. Now, let us look at the voltage across this uh, feedback register okay, Rf. So, uh, I have V out and I have Vc. So, V out minus Vc is equal to I out Rf over here. Again, Vc we take it as 0. So, V out is I out Rf since Vc is 0. So, V out is uh, I out we have already uh, found out in the previous slide is equal to minus of I in. So, I put this V out is equal to my minus i in rf okay and we have already seen uh, that uh, uh, v1 is equal to uh, i in r1 so if i divide this this is what i get so uh, here what we have got v out basically we have got v out is equal to minus a factor rf by r1 into v1 and v1 is my the input signal which i have supplied through the inverting terminal Okay. And so, uh, depending on what value of Rf and R1 I am taking, uh, I am going to get a gain of it. Okay. Uh, I am going to multiply this with this V1. So, my V1 signal is get going to be amplified by this particular ratio Rf by R1. And this Rf and R1, it is dependent on me because these are the external uh, uh, elements which I have put into the op amp circuit. Okay. So, uh, 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 what we have done basically, so this was my input signal basically. So, uh, here uh, uh, since there is a negative sign, it means that the signal is getting inverted and if your RF is more than R1, then you are getting the signal uh, amplified also. So, this is how you are going to get it. So, this is uh, uh, there is inversion from here, here this 
this is positive, uh, but uh, here this is negative as well as uh, you can see the amplitude also uh, being increased. Okay? So, this is what is uh, actually the inverting of the uh, uh, signal. Now, let us see the non-inverting amplifier. Okay? So, in case of non-inverting amplifier what we do is that we supply the signal through the non-inverting uh, uh, terminal over here okay? and uh, uh, this R f is already there and this R 1 is already there and this end is that is inverting terminal end is uh, connected to the ground. Okay. So, uh, uh, as the name indicates non-inverting amplifier amplifies the signal without inverting it okay. um, and here the input is applied to the non-inverting uh, input and uh, a portion of uh, output is also fed back to the uh, input. Now, let us look at uh, uh, equivalent circuit in order to analyze this thing. Okay? So, if we look at the equivalent circuit over here, uh, so again uh, this is my input voltage, this I have grounded, so this is 0, this is my input current, this is my output current okay? and uh, uh, they, uh, the, these two terminals are uh, shortened uh, with the assumption uh, which uh, we have taken. Okay. So, the uh, output uh, voltage at node C uh, over here this is going to be V2 because this side is 0. So, Ohm's law if we apply uh, across the resistor, so uh, this is uh, uh, 0 minus V2 by R1, uh, so this is I in is minus V2 by R1 and uh, similarly at uh, uh, Rf if I do, so V out minus Vc. Uh, uh, v out minus V c is equal to I out into R f. So, uh, uh, v, uh, and what is uh, here? This V c is basically uh, you are going to get uh, the uh, V 2 over here this side. So, I out uh, V out minus V 2 by R f. So, from this equation I get V out is equal to R f out plus V 2 and uh, case uh, Kirchhoff current law at C basically will be giving me I in is equal to minus I out and so uh, I have uh, V 2 is equal to uh, R 1 uh, I out. Uh, so, uh, from here uh, V 2 is equal to uh, uh, V 2 is equal to R 1 I in. So, I in is minus I out. So, I put it over here R 1 I out and V out is equal to V 2 plus R f I out. So, here uh, let us divide this equation by V 2. So, V out by V 2 is equal to 1 plus R f I out by V 2 or V out by V 2 is equal to 1 plus and uh, uh, what uh, this is uh, basically uh, from here here we get I out is equal to uh, V 2 by R 1. Okay. So, if I substitute here I out is equal to uh, V 2 by R 1, uh, so V 2 V 2 get cancelled, so I get R f by R 1. So, here you see what we have my output signal is equal to 1 plus R f by R 1 times V 2. So, this was my input signal okay? and here uh, this is the factor which amplifies my signal. Okay? Uh, so, the non-inverting amplifier has a positive gain more than or equal to 1 because uh, uh, you have uh, addition by 1. So, you have more than or equal to 1 that is there. Then uh, we have uh, buffer or follower. Th uh, this is again a very uh, uh, important uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 important modification or important use of the open basically. Okay, so here what is done is that uh, uh, your output is uh, uh, shortened to the uh, uh, inverting uh, 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 input uh, terminal over here as you can see in this figure. So, this is short and basically this feedback uh, 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 no, uh, the, the, uh, this is uh, directly connected uh, to uh, this one okay? uh, that is the inverting terminal. So, for non-inverting uh, uh, amplifier uh, we have seen V out is equal to 1 plus R f by R 1. Okay, uh, the previous one uh, uh, which uh, we have uh, de uh, devised this one. Okay, 
so uh, uh, v out by v2 is equal to 1 plus rf by r1 ok. Uh, so, if we take here this rf is equal to 0 ok that is whatever we had if I uh, remove that uh, uh, and say r1 if I take a uh, very high high input impedance uh, then we get uh, what? V out is equal to V2 ok or the output voltage is equal to the input voltage ok uh, and uh, uh, here the high uh, input impedance isolates the source from the rest of the circuit ok and this is what is called as a buffer. Uh, then uh, 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 in the amplifiers actually there is some error uh, what we call it as the offset voltage ideally if two inputs are shorted there should not be output ok. But actually some output is there ok. So, to compensate this apply suitable voltage between the two term, uh, terminals and this is what we call it as the offset voltage and this is how the offset voltage Direction is uh, provided. And uh, 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 we talked about the ideal op -amp and its characteristic we draw the uh, equivalent circuit of it, but uh, now let us look at how the real op -amp, uh, looks like ok and what are the uh, 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 characteristic of the real op -amp, ok. So, the actual output deviates its characteristic from the ideal op -amp, as I said ok and the real op -amp has very high input impedance. So, little current is drawn at its uh, uh, input uh, yes open ideal open we said that it has infinite input impedance, but you do not have exact infinite value, but you have a very high uh, value and there is little voltage drop uh, voltage difference between input terminals uh, uh, that is also there. Important uh, terminal characteristic of the real open R uh, input impedance and maximum output uh, voltage. Uh, two other important characteristic of real open R associated with its response to uh, uh, the square wave input. How does uh, the, the open uh, responds to a square wave ok based on that uh, 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 the two other important characteristic of the uh, real open are defined ok. So, when we apply a square wave input to an amplifier circuit the output is not a square actually ok. Uh, it exhibit a ramp from one level to the next next ok. And in order to quantify the open uh, step response which we get basically with the help of the square wave two parameters are specified these are the slew rate and the rise time ok. So, uh, this is how the slew rate is defined basically. So, this is uh, the input the red color is actually indicating the input and the blue color is indicating the output ok. So, you can see that the output is not same as that of the input ok. So, this is your uh, 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 output ok. So, uh, how much is the uh, 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 how much time uh, uh, this deviation is at in how much time it is uh, going to uh, peak in uh, take uh, uh, this uh, input uh, voltage and uh, uh, what is this uh, del V ok. So, uh, the slew rate is basically defined by uh, this delta V divided by delta T ok and it is the maximum time rate of change possible for the output voltage ok. And the other parameter as I said it is rise time and it is time required for the output output to go grow from 10 percent to 90 percent of its final value ok. And it is specified by manufacturer for a specific load and input parameters ok. And uh, uh, frequency response 
um, uh, is an important characteristic of real OPEM. Ideal OPEM uh, exhibits uh, infinite bandwidth. Okay, so uh, we say that uh, uh, it is suited for any uh, 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 frequency range, but actually it is not so. A real OPEM has a finite bandwidth, uh, which is a function of the gain established by the uh, external components. The I mean uh, whatever uh, external components we are going to use uh, along with the OPEM. So, to quantify the dependence of bandwidth on gain, another definition what we call it as the gain bandwidth product that is used and the gain bandwidth product of OPEM is actually the open loop gain into the bandwidth uh, at that particular uh, gain. Okay. So, this is the typical uh, characteristic, uh, typical open uh, characteristic if we plot frequency versus open loop voltage gain. So, uh, this is the uh, curve which uh, you are going to uh, get open uh, and closed loop uh, response, this is what uh, we are going to get. Okay. So, the typical open exhibits a linear uh, log log relationship between the open loop gain and the frequency with the uh, open gain uh, decreases with the input uh, signal uh, frequency. So, uh, you can see that as the signal frequency increases, uh, this gain uh, decreases and uh, higher quality open have larger um, um, uh, GBPs. Okay. The open loop again is characteristic of the open without feedback okay uh, while the closed loop gain is the overall gain of the uh, open circuit uh, that is with the feedback okay uh, so uh, uh, here uh, you can see that the closed loop gain is always limited by the open loop gain of the open okay the frequency where the open loop gain curve first start to limit the closed loop gain is what is called as the fall of frequency. Okay. So, uh, this is the frequency where uh, 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 that uh, um, open loop gain curve starts to limit the closed loop gain uh, okay. and as you increase the gain of a circuit, you limit its bandwidth basically as you can see uh, in this particular uh, figure. Okay. Uh, uh, similarly, if you want a small bandwidth, larger gains can be uh, used. Okay. So, if your uh, bandwidth is small, okay, uh, you are going to be in this region, uh, naturally your uh, voltage gain is going to be uh, more. So, uh, uh, these are the uh, references which uh, you can look into uh, for further reading and uh, uh, these are the references which uh, I have used uh, to prepare this lecture for you. Uh, good luck. Thank you.